Hey guys, my name is Andre. I'm your Minsk guide in real estate relocation and tourism. I'm helping people with relocating to Belarus over the past two years and today we're continuing our uh, little drama with uh, relocation fraud from India. Yeah, as you remember, perhaps there are three different cases, so let's uh, run uh, each of them, an update on each of them, so that you could see what picture we have here by the beginning of 2023. Our worst and saddest case is Zia Khan, the Pakistani guy who is not really a lawyer with 13-year record of international relations and corporate blah blah blah, whatever that website said. So Zia, if you're watching this, hello, we're still looking for you, but I'm afraid Zia's tracks are cold and there's not much hope about getting $25,000 back out of his uh, charming person. So that is a dead end. Two more cases. The two brothers that will remain nameless, uh, we discussed them previously, but they seem to be in two minds whether or not to cooperate with us or not, have been extremely reluctant to cooperate and make any kind of a sensible conversation. We had several meetings with lawyers, with lawyer from our side, with lawyer from their side. They went to the cops to give their first interview, and I promise it's not their last interview about what money they took and what money they are promising to, to give back. And by the way, as the uh, thing is becoming more official, they are becoming less and less like uh, imposing, important. Uh, yeah, we took some cash that was in India, and yeah, we really didn't talk about any interest rate. So, my warning, my first warning of the day, if you wish to deal with any investments into food industry, into catering, into restaurants, basically, here in Minsk, uh, there is a certain restaurant which has several branches across the city. It's based on the food court uh, of Galleria Minsk. Uh, you should be very careful about what you are being promised, about what papers you sign, and about who you're dealing with. If you have any doubts, you may approach uh, me, basically, in this case, and I, I'll be more than happy to show you the written evidence that we have. Uh, the brothers, uh, the funny part, uh, that the brothers always try to pull on some kind of serious image, uh, and this phrase, do you know what kind of family we come from? Basically, I don't give a shit about what family you come from. As long as you're operating in Belarus and you give written promises like a paper factory and you don't really keep any single deadline that you promise. This is the only thing that matters here. And as a Belarusian, I'm personally insulted by this kind of a behavior. So the next part with the brothers is going to get an update this week. I'll be happy to keep you posted, guys. By the way, the total damage uh, inflicted by the brothers and the uh, unpleasant Sri Lankan guy is about $42,000, US dollars. And there is a nice, neat paper, by the way, with the both company stamps about one company investing into the other. Guys, if you're in Belarus, if you're in a foreign country and you're signing some kind of papers, get some third-party lawyer to verify what the hell you're signing. This may save you $42,000 give or take, depending on your scale of investment. And uh, we will see what happens if uh, this week there is no basically sensible conversation, because we're a bit tired of uh, tomorrow the bank wire is going to happen, we are wiring 10,000 bucks. I have a text message from one of the brothers promising to wire 10,000 bucks out of the 40,000 damage to my friend back in India, but the date on that message suggests that it's really, really back behind us. There are new promises, new deadlines, and nothing happens. Hey guys, I couldn't help shooting a little commercial of mine. As you know, the uh, channel is commercial, but it goes on donations, and donations aren't really coming in handsomely la lately. So let me tell you a few words about the uh, application of mine. It's Android-based geotagging application called Geotag by the way, and it's instrumental for anybody who is uh, into research, into land survey, into real estate, farming and such like. With the GeoTag, which is basically an intuition-based camera with all geo information being engraved into the file, it's something you can easily use to report a traffic problem, to pass certain data to your friends, colleagues, whatever, to store geolocation information and, you know, just to geotag any important moment of your life.
While the conventional structures like a building have their addresses on Google Maps and it's easy to share their ad the, the, the address, open hatch, broken tree and something like this uh, has just to be reported using the coordinates. And this thing over here, once the satellites agree on your location up there, gives you a very precise location, as, as precise as the telephone can get you. And this is something you can make use of further. And it's really, really handsomely priced, and for some reason it's very popular in India. I hope you enjoy using the app. Message me any feedback about this. Thank you for watching. Let's continue with the story. Oh, I'm saying this not because I'm wishing ill to some certain cafe. I, I'm okay with all kinds of cafes or nationalities, as a matter of fact, but I'm not okay with how uh, business cannot be done uh, in a human way in respect to people's upbringing, good manners and good spirit. So this is, this is my main motivation here. And last but not least, our bad boy's story, which is the biggest one, as you know, and I'm pretty sure that many of you are expecting the developments. I'm, uh, I'm certain, although no, nobody can be certain in a police or court case in Belarus, that we will have some developments within the next two to four weeks because we unearthed literally 10 cases of fraud, uh, but unfortunately some half of these guys turned back, either forgetting their money or uh, making the bad guys refund, which is the sweetest part, because the third guy who gets cash in India can actually be approached with a refund request, if they tell the truth, of course. So some of the people got their money back, and for now the bad boy has uh, almost paid the damage money to my client, uh, to my friend, basically, Kavaljit. He lost 40,000 bucks on four different houses, which were bought for him in his name here by the Belarusian guy that he never saw. Uh, arrangements were made by the... Uh, charming person that we talked about. He has a Rolls Royce. By the way, he's about to sell his car, so the rumor goes that he's packing his stuff and is about to leave the country. I'm not sure if that's any true, but that could be an interesting update. I hope he's not leaving within the next two months because we really need him at court. We'll see what, what happens. Consider this an advertisement of the bank. So we have some three persons that uh, have been uh, pretty much hurt and damaged by the big operator we have been discussing here. Two of them have pretty solid proof, so they say, papers on hand, screenshots and everything. So while uh, Kavaljit's story is more like to warn people, these guys will be really uh, handy to have at the police station and then the court. And again, this is really long term, so throughout the whole year we might or might not get some many exciting updates and uh, positive moves on this side. We sent our messages, the message is pretty public. And one last thing that I would like you to keep in mind, guys, I'm pretty sure that there are more clients of the bad boy uh, in town right now. So if uh, they don't want to lose money, and I'm pretty sure that their transactions here are not going to be any fruitful, any more fruitful than those of Kavaljit and other unfortunate guys, I would like them to contact me. I'm pretty sure that they have been suitably brainwashed. Don't approach Andre. He'll take you to the cops and he'll damage you all the immigration and uh, property things. Approach the embassy. Approach your embassy, talk to them, talk to the Indian community, double check the information that you get, sitting in that luxury car and watching those uh, luxury shows and all the bullshit, and try and see if you would like to invest into the guy who sells you that, or you may go some other way. This is the best advice I have for now, and uh, I'm pretty happy, guys, that you are still with the channel. As you know, the lawyers are costly, so many of you are asking for some solid proof and the real names on the screen. This can be done when the investigation is over and the court pronounces them bad guys. For now, I can only warn you and try to keep your bloody eyes open. I hope I sound convincing. Thank you very much for watching. Ask your questions underneath. I'll be happy to host a video conference with or video session, video show, whatever. Uh, at the embassy if they set up one such thing with the bad boy uh, asking him to explain what the hell he's uh, doing and uh, this would be really a lovely show maybe sometime during the year maybe never my contacts and my donation links are under the video i'll be happy to see you in minsk someday i hope it's not gonna be about helping you out of some kind of a tragedy 
Uh, maybe just a coffee meeting when you're in town. I'm pretty open for any contacts. Cheers from Minsk. See you later.